okay, now what can I do for you today? G give me, um, uh, just to start with, give me a bit of background about you uh, in relation to the, uh, as I say, the movement, maybe movement's not the right word, but the subject of, of men's rights. How, how did you come by um, this, this topic, so to speak, and uh, find your role within it? Well, it's an interesting question. Uh, I think that, uh, honestly, I began to identify as a men's rights advocate uh, before I realized that really wasn't the appropriate moniker uh, right, right. For, for what I do. I don't work in, because I believe that probably 98% of men's rights issues can be uh, prevented or resolved with men's decisions in life. Right, right. Uh, so I would prefer to just be identified as a men's advocate, and I work in that arena advocating yeah, yeah, for men. Yeah. yeah. Tell me, when you say they're ninety-eight percent, I know that's sort of, you know not not a fixed figure, but explore that idea for me um, that it just takes uh, a decision. Well, yeah, and the number ninety-eight, of course, is arbitrary. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, I wasn't trying to put that out there as something uh, really specific. No, yeah. but one example is uh, if you don't get married, you can't get divorced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, many of the problems that men experience in family court can be prevented by them simply walking off the playing field, which is what yeah. I suggest that most men do given the current yeah. climate. Yeah. And what else? Um, False accusations, that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of the times that the, the problem of uh, false accusations happens at the hands of personality disorder type women, people, uh, uh, women with mental health issues. Right. And men can learn to spot that stuff. It's not exactly hidden. Uh, yeah. But what happens is that men uh, get sexually attracted and their common sense goes out the window. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, there's nobody, feminist, non-feminist, everybody knows this is true, uh, that men just lose their minds over women and make bad decisions. And yeah. what I try to do in my work and, and in working with men and what I write about is to inform men of what they're looking for and what to do about it when they see it. And again, yeah. good decisions, uh, not going to bed with a crazy woman uh, is a sound decision uh, yeah. that uh, I heartily recommend to all men and I assert that it will absolutely prevent most of the problems that the guys who write me and I get emails every day by yeah. men who are saying telling me their lives have been destroyed by women that they haven't seen their children in years that they were falsely accused in jail they lost their jobs their social standing was ruined their even their families turned against them as a yeah. result of relationships with the wrong women and yeah. that can be prevented you, you, you're not just saying simply cut yourself off if you're a man, cut yourself off from women, are you? No, no, not at all. Um, yeah. uh, I, well, I'm saying, you know, a lot of people criticize the MGTOW movement as, as being too extreme because these are many of them are men who do cut themselves off entirely yeah. from women. My suggestion to men is that if you're not constitutionally capable of screening out losers, you probably should cut off contact with women um but that's a personal failing yeah. in my mind uh you yeah. can screen bad women out uh, like i said that we live in a society that encourages women uh, in these yeah. behaviors and rewards them for being abusive and controlling um and for being liars and finger pointer finger pointers uh, we absolutely reinforce this in women and we uh, the moment you mention the problem of false allegations, somebody, usually with a feminist bent, is going to chime in and say, oh, but only 2% uh, are, yeah. are false allegations, which is bullshit in and of itself. Uh, but even if it were 2%, that's a hell of a lot of men. Yeah. Well, you say society encourages women to be uh, you know, finger pointers, as it were. But by what? By, by not... Well, I, society, we, uh, I look at what we, what terms that we coin yeah, yeah. about men and women, because that tells us what we really believe. Not get all the uh, political rubbish out of the way. 
Yeah. We, as a society, we coin terms like take him to the cleaners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And say, you go, girl. Yeah. Um, there's open uh, uh, approval for paternity fraud. Uh, that yeah, was yeah, something yeah. that was brought out in the Red Pill movie. Uh, yeah. We also have coined terms like when mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy and happy wife, happy life, because there's truth in those terms. But when I say truth, I'm saying they're reflective of social sickness between men and women that men yeah. can resolve with a different attitude. Yeah, yeah. Is that, uh, you know, the, 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 the social sickness and, and the curing of that social sickness, is, is that something that um, women can and should be part of? Uh, can you rephrase that? I'm not sure I understood the question. Well, you, you spoke then of a social sickness. In the curing of that social sickness, is, is this something women should be part of? I, I you know, is, is well, this, this... Yeah, in an yeah. ideal world full of unicorns, <laughs> yes, women should be a part of that, but that's not what our society encourages women. We don't encourage women to be accountable or responsible for their behavior. As a matter of fact, we lean the other way when it comes to that. It's why we end up with terms like believe the woman, uh, because we can't even put the idea of evidence as a, a burden on them uh, in yeah. their allegations in life. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, women should be a part of that solution. The fact is they're not going to be for the most part. So men need to take on responsibility for that themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not going to be part of it because society won't let them or, or, or what? I mean, you know, most of the women I know are not in any way anti-men. And, and I think if you put the kind of, you know, the, the kind of core um issues of men's rights to them, they, they would probably see them as being in, entirely reasonable, you know, in the kind of cold light of day, you know, taking all the motion out of the... Well, yeah, if you can get to that conversation with women, I agree with you. I mean, I, yeah. I, I know many women that are in my social circles that I don't believe would behave that way, or, or that I've never yeah. seen evidence of them behaving that way. But then yeah. again, go spend the better part of a day sitting in a family court. Yeah. And seeing what happens. Yes, there are plenty of women. And it's why I encourage men to use screening tools with women, because there are yeah. women out there who don't behave this way, uh, who don't, you know, uh, embrace all the double standards that our society does about men and women. And they're yeah. out there. Men have to learn not to accept anything less than that. And I think that would ultimately help women uh, modify their behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there have been, you know, pushes over recent decades for, um, you know, towards improving rights for women. Why do you think there is this disparity um, when it comes to talking about rights for men? Um, well, that's a simple one, really. It's what I call gynocentrism. Uh, we favor women. We want to rescue women. Uh, we want to believe women. We, uh, you know, Aaron Pitsy, who I'm sure you're familiar with by this point, yeah. um, started a, a, the world's first shelter for battered women in Cheswick yeah. uh, back in 71. Uh, it was a resounding success. Yeah. And of course, she found during the process of doing that, that there were a good number of men who were physically abused in relationships. And she tried to raise money for that and the donors dried up immediately. And the feminist picket signs came out. Um, she was threatened with bomb threats. Um, uh, this, is what our, this is what our society produces around women. Um, and it's an insanity that uh, it, it, I don't see leaving anytime soon. I think that's, we're just, you know, if we hadn't, been so overly protective of women, we would have probably been a dead end evolutionary experiment. Uh, right. But now it's like the gorilla on the putting green. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> so it, it, that is, a, you know, it's just not working. And I, and I think that the problem is, is that we have taken the pro 
protection of and provision for women to such extremes that we've now infantilized them. Right, um, right. We don't hold them accountable for their behavior. Yeah, yeah. We being society. Society. Uh, yeah. In general, I mean, the courts, uh, you look at the sentencing disparity between men and women around, yeah. uh, along a magnitude of 63% more time for men for the same crimes uh, as women. Uh, yeah. There's no other way to describe that honestly than a sickness. Yeah, yeah. If, uh, I imagine you've had, had this conversation before, but you know, when you speak of men's rights, but you know, if, if I you know, imagine being sat in a pub with a group of my friends, male and female, and, and start talking of, of men's rights, I, I, I imagine um, the men would probably not be entirely sure what I was talking about. You know, I, they're not kind of conscious that this is a an issue or that there are issues. And I imagine the women would um, probably suggest something along the lines of men haven't been in control <laughs> in society thus far um and uh, it's kind of women's turn or something along those lines oh yeah that, that's why what, we what, die what, seven what, years sooner than women is because we have so much control and privilege um uh, yeah i mean that's the narrative and men will follow it uh, just as readily as women for the most part um, yeah. if you talk, but you get a different conversation if you talk to a guy who hasn't seen his kids in three years. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Why do we follow that narrative then? I mean, men and women alike. Uh, I think I just think it's human nature. Uh, unfortunately, right. uh, it was a requirement before technology and a burden yeah. after technology. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> Why do you think there is, in kind of recent years I'm speaking of, you know, you know I'm, I'm thinking about in, in terms of TV and advertising and that kind of thing. Why is there broadly a, a, an anti, well, is there broadly, I should put words in your mouth, is there broadly an anti-male bias in culture now? Oh, absolutely. Um... I mean, it's sort of like you, you point out the discussion that if you go into a pub and talk about men's rights issues, the yeah. first thing you're going to hear is, what about women? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we can't even, I noticed this, Josh, even in your article that addressed men's suicide, we can't yeah, yeah. even talk about men killing themselves without rushing to point out how women attempt suicide. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, more than men do. Uh, and yeah. we don't even acknowledge that what you're talking about in many cases there is women who took a half a dozen aspirin and called 911. That goes yeah, yeah. down as a suicide attempt. And then we create a false equivalence about that between that and a guy with a bullet in his brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it's a, uh, we can't even talk about male suicide as a gendered issue without people from all sides of the political spectrum rushing in to point us, point out to us somehow how women have it worse. And that goes back to the gynocentrism that I was mentioning in your previous question. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you define gynocentrism for me? Well, it's the privileging of, at, at this point, it, it is, yeah. a, a, I think if you had asked me, uh, Three million years ago on the African savanna, I would have said it was a survival mechanism needed yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to push the human species forward. Today, if you ask me what gynocentrism is, it's female privilege. Yeah. Uh, th th this is a tricky question. I mean, not, not least because I'm not entirely, not entirely sure what I mean. But, but yeah. is there an aspect, obviously you hear this, this phrase more and more, this, this kind of idea of toxic masculinity, but... And, and it often refers to kind of male stereotypes, I suppose. Do you think there is a good cause for masculinity as it's presented to kind of be reworked, reframed, improved on or whatever? Or are masculine behaviours hardwired in some way and it's our attitude to them that needs changing? Do you understand well, 
I'm not entirely sure I understand my own question, Paul. But yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I think I get it. No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. And I think, yeah, masculinity should be reworked and redefined if you want the entire planet to be a third world nation. Right. Uh, that's the effect of reworking yeah. masculinity. And I'll point out something else, and I'm, I'm not trying to pick on you, Josh, but I'm going to go back to your, your article on men again that I read. Yeah. Um, all the attributes about masculinity that you pointed out, the stoicism, the control, uh, the yeah. capacity for aggression, all this stuff, what yeah. you didn't mention in there is where would be men be in the process of sexual selection were it not for those characteristics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would be alone. Yeah. So what, what feminists prescribe as we need to re-examine masculinity and the toxic elements of it and control and stoicism and, uh, uh, you know, uh, not expressing emotions, all that. Sure, that's a great idea if you want to sleep alone. And this is something that I was sorry to see wasn't addressed in your article, nor have I ever seen it in any feminist literature, is pointing out that the very things that feminists recommend are problems with masculinity are the things that attract women. Yes, and indeed. Yeah, we, yeah, can't, yeah. we can't overlook the power of that and the importance yeah, yeah. of it. Um, and, and so, no, honestly, I mean, more direct question, no, masculinity doesn't need to be reworked. I think... Yeah. Men, as a rule, are yeah. well served to be a lot more conscious of their choices in life uh, yeah. and, and how their, their biology often leads them to bad choices. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. that isn't a change in masculinity. That's just more awareness as a human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you think we're coming to that? Do you think men are becoming more... Uh, are just thinking more, I suppose, just thinking yes. more about behavior and their attitudes and not, you know, not, not, not trying to uh, do them down or get rid of them, but at least sort of bothering to try and understand where it comes from. Well, uh, there's certainly a, a subculture of men that are doing that right now. And we get yeah. demonized as far as you can go by the media, by feminist ideologues, by traditionalists, uh, yeah. by conservatives across the board, guys that starts thinking, Hey, you know something? I want to re-examine my role as a provider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women yeah. are making money these days, and uh, many times more than men. They they have just as many and often more career opportunities. How about they find their fucking purse when the dinner check arrives? Yeah, yeah. And when men start doing that, all of a sudden everybody wants traditional men again. Yeah, yeah. And they start being shamed for taking care of themselves and looking out for their own, uh, for their own interests. It's yeah. amazing. That's gynocentrism too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a relatively new subject to me, you know, so I've been doing a lot of reading over recent weeks and, and what strikes me is kind of problematic, I guess, is, is the, uh, conflation of what strike me as kind of quite reasonable ideas in men's rights in terms of uh, moving towards um, cold, hard and fast, exacting gender equality, if that's the right phrase, and the extreme, um, you mentioned MGTOW, uh, incels, it, confusion with kind of alt-right type of you know kind of very easy targets i suppose for, for the media that, that you know i would strike most people as being a bit crazy a bit conspiracy theorist etc cetera, etc cetera. this i have to say is more of an american phenomenon than it is in the uk or europe right do, do, do you think confusing those two is is problematic yes and i think it's intentional uh, right. I think the, the people in the media, I mean, your, your peers uh, yeah. for, for years now uh, have sought to, one, uh, take incidents like Elliot Roger, yeah. who, who was uh, not a men's rights advocate at all, um, didn't like men's rights advocates, no evidence he ever belonged to, to my websites, to, to any of the men's rights forums that are out there. Yeah. Um, he was a psychopath who murdered yeah, yeah. a bunch of people 
And the feminist inspired media turned that into he's an MRA. And their latest trend is to lump everybody into the incel group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so everybody, if I'm if I want to help a guy figure out how to see his children after three years of having them alienated, then I'm yeah. an incel. Um, yeah. it, and that is going on full scale right now in the media. It's absolutely, well, it's what we've come to expect. Sorry, but your profession has gone down the toilet, dude. Indeed. Do, 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 do you think there is anything the um, sort of men's rights movement, if we can call it a movement, can do to kind of put some clear water between itself and its ideas and um, the extremism with which it's often characterized? Probably not in the minds of most of the general public who are basically, in my opinion anyway, are, are kind of lemming-like. They uh, consume whatever the media feeds them and that becomes their belief system. We see that happening yeah. in, in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah. uh, is there, but, where it matters, which is in where the direct work with men, our, our meetings at regarding men, our group processes, uh, yeah. there's clear water between that stuff there is as much as is needed uh, for us to get our jobs done. And it works perfectly well. I mean, to be brutally blunt about it, nobody in our groups gives a damn of what, about what the general public believes. The general public's beliefs about men and women are the problem to begin with. Yeah, 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 indeed. Why do you think, I mean, aside from the, the, the media failings, wh why do you think there is a seeming reluctance to address the disparities in, in rights between men and women? And I was just talking to, about an hour or two ago, I was talking to, to Mike Buchanan, who I think you've spoken to recently, because he, he knew I was going to be chatting to you later on. Right. And, and, and obviously he, he gave me a kind of a very precise list about preferential recruitment, domestic violence, reproductive rights, all sorts of you know, very specific um, issues. Why is there a reluctance to address those, a seeming reluctance, shall we say, to address those very specific issues, because either in law or by enforcing laws, which already exist quite possibly, depending on the country, and obviously. Well, it's, it's largely, I think, one of the effects of of gynocentrism uh, on a social level is there is, uh, if you're familiar with the concept of pathogen disgust, nobody wants basically to help men. You can't raise it, you, you can't even go out as a politician without serious risk. I mean, it's less so I think in the UK, but yeah. there's no American senator or house member that would stand up and say, we need to do something about false accusations against men, or we need to do something about parental alienation, is because yeah, yeah. it would be political suicide. Nobody's right, gonna right. do that. Nobody's gonna touch it for anything in the world because yeah. our society treats men who are wounded, men who are suffering, suffering as defective and wants to quickly cast them aside. They don't represent anything positive to, to contribute to society. Broken men are hated. Uh, right. For, out of pathogen disgust. Yeah. Um, so it, it doesn't matter what the, I mean, I'm sure Mike, and he's very good about statistics. I'm sure he could, uh, and I know for a fact, he knows this subject inside and out. But yeah, there's yeah. not a single, single matter that he recited to you, I guarantee you, that you could go out into the media and say, we need to bring awareness to this in any way without enormous backlash from both sides of the political spectrum in the United States. In the, in the US, yeah, specific. Do, do, do you think the US is a special case or, or is your feeling that that's kind of broadly the case? Well, I, I think it's, you know, they've, they've talked about getting rid of women's prisons in the UK. Um, uh, the, there is this sort of destructive, uh, corrupting gynocentrism in uh, every society on the earth, East and West. Yes. Uh, you see, there's a huge men's rights movement in India uh, yeah. because of what's going on there in the family courts and dowry laws. Yeah. Uh, but again, across the board, the moment you try to talk about any of these things, the first accusation is woman hater, that you, if, if you want to solve men's problems, you must hate women. Feminists push that narrative, so do conservatives it's absolutely amazing yeah 
Yeah. Well, why is that? I, I, I suppose it comes back to this, this gynocentrism idea. But as, as, so, what, what, why? Why is that? Why, why would it be? I mean, if you know, if you take some of the the, the uh, issues that that Mike brought up, you know, for example, uh, you know, domestic violence or, or uh, parental alienation, for example, it, I, are you really saying that if a politician in the states or elsewhere said, you know, we need to tackle the fact that there is domestic violence against men, that that would be political suicide for them? I mean, you know, in the, have you ever that, seen one do it? Nope. <laughs> there's your answer well, why, if, why if there was happen? any political I, 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 advantage in helping men politicians would be helping men there's no political advantage in helping any men there is right. abundance of political advantage in infantilizing women casting them as a victim class and throwing tons of money at their problems real or imagined okay uh, so, so, sorry so so does the politicians not do this because it would screw their careers or a politician's not doing this because there's simply nothing in it. And they, they seem like two different reasons. I think, it, uh, I think it's because they know it would screw their careers. Uh, Rick Scott right. is a great example. He was a governor of Florida, a conservative, a Republican. A bill came up and passed through the Florida legislature to end lifetime alimony. For right, right. The assumption being yeah. that if a woman could get a job, she could take care of herself a radical idea like that he vetoed it yeah because he was afraid of what women voters would do yeah and and we one of the things we have to be able to talk about honestly josh yeah. is that the the woman's vote is predicated on self-interest more than social interest yeah yeah i suppose the the, the, the problem there is that they're often considered or, or, or at the moment, anyway, they're, they're considered the same thing. Is, is, do you not agree with that? That, that the women's interest is a social interest? Well, well, that's well, a yes, uh, absolutely. And you know something, to <clears throat> a, a great degree with many women's issues, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but it also happens to be true that men's issues are social interest uh, of value. They're very important. We've got men right now that are falling out of education left and right. And yeah. we're already hearing the panicked cries of women saying, we're all the good earning men. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you answer the accusation, not put to you personally, but the, the way many people might think that the men's movement is anti-women? as you just framed it from a, a you know a political standpoint H how do you kind of counter that by saying it, it's not anti-women how do you get around that negative perception is what i'm trying to get to well i don't think you do uh, I, right. I, I i just don't think it's possible uh, really it is too easy to sell women as victims and of course our codes for men and masculinity the ones that you pointed to in in your article, man, yeah. that men don't talk about their problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they start doing that, they're seen as defective and rejected. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I just don't see a way to get around that. The only thing that we can do for men, in my opinion, this is yeah. what all my work boils down to, is for yeah. the men who can wrap their heads around the idea that they're actually human beings and that their problems deserve attention and that their gender problems deserve attention uh, is going to be through a subculture of men who can embrace that. 90% uh, of society just can't wrap their heads around helping men with problems because men are supposed to help themselves so that they yeah. can turn around and help others. Yeah. And if they're yeah. not doing that, they're worthless. This is yeah. what we condition men to be. And then we shame them for being conditioned the way they are. So it's a bit of a catch 22. Absolutely. It's not going anywhere with that. That's why, you know, I, I try to tell people all the time that ask me these questions, there's never going to be a men's rights victory parade in, in Washington, yeah. D.C. Nothing like that is going to happen. We're never going to mainstream. We're going to yeah. have to be a reviled subculture of men who have figured out that it's actually a good idea to take care of themselves. Yeah, yeah. But taking care of themselves is not being anti-women. 
No, of course not. No. And, and, and again, you know, uh, in, in the real world, every movement, you know, I've read feminists who think that all men should be castrated. Yeah. I've, I've read feminists who think that every rape ac accusation must be treated as 100% verified truth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've read all kinds of hateful stuff about men yeah, written yeah. by feminist scholars, male and female alike. Yeah. And um, so every movement, regardless of whatever legitimate aspects of it, is going to draw some nutcases. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in the case of feminists, the nutcases are running the show. In, yeah. in the men's rights community, we have outliers who yeah. uh, are really angry and really hurt. You know, when you say you don't have to hate women, yeah. do we really expect that a guy whose job, whose income, whose home was taken from him, whose children was taken from him by yeah. a court that was totally blind to all her bad behavior yeah. so, is suddenly... Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is that misogynists are made, not born, and they don't help us by being hateful toward women. But at some point, we got to understand what we're creating in men and the anger yeah. that we're creating in them. Um, and these guys also need a place to vent and to get make room in their cups for something else. Um, yeah. So. I don't go all aghast whenever somebody says something negative about women. I just assume they're angry. They need to vent for a while and eventually they'll swing back around to a more balanced perspective unless we start shitting on them. Yeah. And then mm. it just gets worse. Mm. Mm. How do you reach those uh, angry outliers? Let them be angry. Yeah. Why? And again, you know, when women say something dismissive or insulting toward all men, they'll get yeah. a they'll get ten thousand upvotes on Twitter. Yeah, 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 yeah. If a man says, "I think women need to learn to be accountable," they will flood in and call him a misogynist. Yeah. I think we need a little perspective on what's going on here, and we don't have much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You were spoke a moment ago about this idea of being a, a reviled subculture for some time. How would you see this playing out and over what sort of time frame? You know, how, how do you envisage this this working out, you know, hopefully positively? Well, I think it's it's working out. Right now, the way it will be working out in 10 years or 20 years or whatever, we will still yeah. have a comparatively small uh, group of men who are reimagining their lives. And, and let me just throw some that we've talked about a lot of negative stuff and this stuff needs to be talked about. I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, but also in the men that I work with, I'm seeing yeah. guys reclaim their lives, rec reclaim their, their starting careers over again. Uh, yeah. Their, opening up to relationships again with a different set of values and a different perspective about what they want in a woman. And this is happening in large scale uh, yeah. going on in the work that we're doing it regarding men. Um, yeah. There isn't, I mean, people, anybody can join and come and listen to what we talk about it. There's some ribbing yeah. about women, no doubt about it, it happens. Uh, yeah. Also, most of the conversation is about problem solving and about yeah. moving forward and about what are you going to do with your life okay you'll never see you and we're dealing with questions like men who know they're never going to see their children again yeah 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 and how do they live with that and and try to find something decent in life and a reason to keep going yeah. um and th so this is this is the work we'll be doing i mean for as long as i'm alive this is what i'll be doing yeah yeah but I don't see I don't see the nature of it changing. I don't think you can change the bias that favors women in society. I just don't think it's possible. But but do, do you think that bias has always been there, or is that bias a relatively recent invention? When I say well, recent, you know, I mean the last. It's always been there. The it's, last it's, half century. Um, it, you know, 
how long ago did we come up with the term women and children first? Yeah, yeah. It, it's not a new phenomenon. And, and again, I think it goes back to necessity that there was a yeah. time where if we didn't protect women com and completely be willing to die for it, to get yeah. them through gestation and early childhood, we yeah. would not have made it. Uh, yeah. So it, it's in our, our DNA uh, yeah. to do this. Uh, but then yeah. again, it's also in my DNA that if I'm starving and you have a cheeseburger to hit you on the head with a rock and take it, part of what makes us human is to rise above yeah. our biological programming where it has quit working for us. And man, has it ever quit working for us when it comes to men and women? Yeah, yeah. Do you think it doesn't work for women either? No, I don't think, I think it's why if you look at all the surveys about female happiness, they're fucking miserable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are absolute, they have more choices, more power, uh, more authority over their lives and their bodies than they've ever had in human history. Yeah. And, and arguably more freedoms than men in many ways. And yeah, yeah. they are absolutely miserable. It's not working for them yeah. to, to have been rejected their own femininity and yeah. their own nature as women. It's, it's yeah. absolutely a, a loser for them. Yeah, yeah. When you say their own nature as women, how would you define that? I think their nature of women is to work cooperatively with men, not, yeah. not competitively. Yeah. That is our nature as a species is to cooperate with the other, to share what's important to families, to share those loads and to uh, produce safe environment together. That's what yeah. happened throughout most of human history yeah. Uh, yeah. until we made the stupid mistake of allowing the state into our relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't work out if, if you're if you're optimistic or pessimistic. <laughs> or, I, hopefully I'm in the middle somewhere. I, if, if, if the question is, do I see this thing ever catching on and going mainstream for men, then yeah. I'm incredibly pessimistic. Well, uh, <laughs> if, okay. if the question is, you know, is there a path for the men who want to, to reimagine yeah. their lives, then I'm incredibly optimistic. They absolutely yeah. can. Men wield enormous personal power. They've just been shamed into not using it. Uh, yeah. for a very long time and part of what i try to do with men is to encourage them to use that power that you know yeah. i've got a term no victims just volunteers i don't yeah. want the men's movement to be a mirror of feminism i don't want federal funding i don't care about having shelters for men i honestly don't none of that stuff is what i think is important but yeah. men can solve their own problems just by being aware and by not, uh, I mean, I hate to use a feminist stereotype, but by yes. not allowing their dick to tell, to make their decisions for them. Yeah. Yeah. But when you say you don't want the men's movement to a mirror, a mirror of feminism, presumably you want the state, wherever that may be, to recognize these uh, men's rights. Oh, that would be wonderful. That's not going to happen, though. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's nothing in it for the state. Wounded men are a loser for the state. The, the yeah. state needs productive taxpayers. So that's what they'll pay attention to. Uh, it's just not going to work that way. And the answer is, frankly, uh, no, I don't care if the state recognize it. If enough men refused matrimony and if enough men went to family attorneys before they got deeply involved with women and uh, set up strategies to protect themselves yeah. the state would change women would change yeah um and that is a conversation that may be possible one day but at some point we need a conversation with women uh, about their expectations of men what do you think they are at the moment and obviously this varies massively from person to person but you know broad brush um they're insanely unrealistic uh, right. All you have to do is look through a bunch of dating apps at women's yeah. profiles to know how yeah. absolutely insane their expectations of men. It's called the triple six, six figure yeah. income, six pack abs and six inch dick. 
you've got to have the triple six or, or swipe left. And, and what these women want, largely, yeah. and again, I'm not, and I want to make this clear, I don't know what you're going to write, but I know what I'm going to say, yeah. is that I do not blame women for how we socialize them. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. train them into these insanely unrealistic expectations. And yeah. then we then some of us get mad at them when they start acting like that's what their expectations were. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's kind of stupid to point the finger at women and say they're to blame. It largely this is men conditioning them to be in insatiably demanding and childish about their expectations in relationships. Yeah, where have those ideas come from then? I mean, if, if you say it's unrealistic or insane to uh, criticise women for having those um, ideals, why have they got them? They're gynocentric ideals. They're part of the human uh, uh, experience, if you will, uh, that men are here largely as protection and provision machines. Yeah, We don't like the machines to break or squeak or make noise or need maintenance or anything like that. Just keep working. And yeah. it dehumanizes men. I mean, a lot of women don't realize this. I can remember in a moment of rare honesty from my ex-wife, she yeah. actually looked at me and said, you know, I never even realized you had feelings. Right. And she's not the only woman. <laughs> yeah. with that perspective yeah. and, we, and I think we need to have an honest discussion about that and I think it's possible at some point but it's only possible if men go into it principled with their values intact and yeah. ready to to reject non-hackers uh in, on the quick yeah uh, that's what needs to happen you do that with enough men women will eventually figure out that they have to have a conversation other than you know, what are you going to do for me? Yeah. But you can't, I mean, do you, do you think that the vast majority of women don't think their male partners or men generally have feelings? I mean, that might have been the case with your, well, yeah, in, in, well, your it, wife, but. Yeah, again, and, and she wasn't uncommon. I, I think, yeah, I think there is a lot of women who either don't understand that if you, if you peel back a man's skin, you're not going to find gears of wires. You find flesh and blood. Yeah, and yeah. Because of the social expectations of men, how we socialize women, they're yeah. either not recognizing men's emotional existence or yeah. their understanding of it is only abstract and greatly diminished. Right. They, okay. That that tendency to see men as unending pro providers and protectors. Uh, yeah. That clouds the view of men as human beings, and there's no way that we can, um, you know, not to me. There's no way to not recognize that. To, to to fail to recognize that we dehumanize men in favor of making them productive um, is we can't even have an honest discussion if we can't get that on the table. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, uh, what, what, what's the last question? Man? What, what, what do you think? would bring you, you've spoken many uh times during our chat now about change at the kind of individual level and, and, and got individual men kind of making a reassessment of themselves and their relationships and all the rest of it um that's going to be a very slow process of change it, it, is there one you know if you had a magic wand is, is there one thing you would change about the culture or society that you think would be of greatest benefit to men and women alike in, in terms of addressing these particular rights issues? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a, a thousand things <laughs> I could do. <laughs> you mean, aside from filling my bank accounts uh, with a magic <laughs> one. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> I, would, I would like men and women both to understand that both parties in a relationship have responsibilities, obligations, and the necessity of accountability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is one of the things with women in this culture is that we infantilize them and we do not 
demand that women be accountable for their decisions. We don't demand that they're accountable in our courts of law when they commit crimes. We don't demand that they're accountable in family law when they make false accusations, when they are alienating children uh, from their fathers. We don't demand yep. any accountability. We don't even demand them to find their purse on a dinner date. Uh, yeah. If I could change anything, it would be to bring accountability into the lives of women. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Um, what, what are you kind of, what's keeping you busy at the moment? Have you, have you got anything? <laughs> well, yes, well, we're- A pipeline, we're, a program, a book, yeah, a conference, well, like uh, Regarding men is we're rebranding under XY Crew. Right. That's happening right now. And uh, I'm in the process of building the new website from that. I'm up to my eyeballs in the tech stuff on the back end of it. Uh, but in a few weeks, we hope to have that finished, the, the new site launched and the, the total rebranding done. Right. But it's still as regarding men. Are you going for it? Yeah, it's still the same fundamental operation. Uh, daily groups uh, for men, we're doing them seven days a week. We have a cyber shed that's open. 24 <clears> seven so that if a guy is having a hard time emotionally at 2 30 in the morning he's got a chance of coming in there and finding somebody to talk to yeah yeah cool fantastic thank you very much for your time well much appreciated very interesting um good luck with your work and and uh yeah i hope to speak to you again sometime all right, that sounds wonderful. Thanks, Josh. You have a Thank nice you very day. Much. Bye bye. Keep well.